Warning, the following audio transmission is based on theory and is intended for entertainment purposes only. It's Doomsday and its affiliates will not be held liable for anything your dumbass does. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, everybody, to It's Doomsday Podcast. Today is June 18th, 2023. Time is 1929. And happy Father's Day, Al. Happy Father's Day to you, Jester. And happy Father's Day to all, all the fathers out there, all the stepfathers, all the step in and do the fatherly type thing to everybody. You don't necessarily have to birth a child to be the father of a child to be Happy Father's Day. There's a lot of guys out there that don't get credit for what they do. Exactly. I agree with that 100%. What was that old saying? Anyone can be a dad, but it takes a father to be a man or something like that. (laughs) Something like that. There's just a lot of guys out there in the world that have stepped in to raise kids to be a good role model and put food on the table, take care of kids. And they need their, they need their, their props too, you know? So, right. Exactly. Congratulations. Congratulations to them. Right. Exactly. Um, so guys uh, out there listening, I just want to I want to first off, I want to thank everybody. Al, our listener basis has been climbing and uh, everybody I guess got the memo that I'd prefer them listening over on Apple because Apple's now our number one downloaded um, platform. That's, so for all you guys perfect. out there that made the jump over to Apple, that's awesome. Appreciate you. And the only other thing I got to say is if you're listening on Podbean and you don't like Apple, Jump over to iHeart, jump over to Spotify, and and support the channel over there, guys. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you're new to the show, make sure to comment, like, share, all that good stuff. Make sure you hit that follow button so you can get all the new episodes as soon as they drop. Um, Absolutely. So today, I wanted to get in because this has been something talked about a lot in the media in the last couple weeks, and nobody's really, I think, hitting it hard on how to prepare for wildfires. So I said to myself, why don't we cover wildfire preparation right right there's a lot of wildfires going on right now there is and before we really get into how to prep for this i want to get into kind of the safety side of this so number one guys is if if they tell you to evacuate evacuate right yep don't don't stick around because here's the reality if you're stubborn and you choose not to get out of there and something happens you end up losing your life or you lose your children or family's lives you know that's on you if they're telling you to evacuate it's probably for a good reason all right right absolutely Um, and you know with the evacuation let's talk about this for a second real quick it's not necessarily the fire that's going to kill you it's the smoke inhalation so if you say to yourself hey man i'm fine there's not enough stuff around me to burn, blah, blah, blah. If that wind changes direction and you start dealing with that smoke inhalation, you are you could die pretty quickly. Yes, sir. And it doesn't take but just a little bit of smoke to start congesting your lungs. It's not just that right now it can set up for pneumonia and lots of other things, long-term effects from wildfires. I had a cousin, a distant cousin that spent his whole career um, in the forestry service, and it a little bit of smoke smoke goes a long ways in bad health believe me oh yeah if you're if you're someone that's got asthma copd or you have other lung disorders yeah this is very bad for you very so um also so here's what you guys need to do in preparation for the fire stuff let's let's get into like the prepper side of this right there are ways to prep your home but i want to get into this idea of evacuation so most counties that suffer from wildfires or any kind of major natural disasters usually have an evacuation plan in place. Find out what your community or county offers. The second thing I'd like to do is, guys, have a preparedness plan for your family to get the hell out of Dodge in case the time need, in case you need to go, right? Important right. documents, different medications you or your family may need, 
and figure out where you're going to go, right? Right. Identify the things that you need to get out so you can get out quickly. You can lose the structure very quickly. And remember, folks, insurance most of the time pays for your structure, but it's not going to pay for your life. You can lose a home. I hate to see people do it. It happens every year. But really, is your home worth your life or the life of your family? Right. Exactly. So um, with these preparedness plans, all right, there's if you, if you talk to different people out there that are in preparation or you know, that are survival and stuff like that. Everybody's going to tell you something that's a little bit different, right? Are you looking for something kick-ass to add to your closet? Reaper has the hookup for t-shirts, hoodies, button-ups, hats, beanies, and plenty of other badass products. You can check out Reaper Apparel Company at www.reaperapparelco.com and use code DOOM10 for 10% off. Jester only stands behind brands he believes in, and Dan at Reaper Apparel has a mission, and Jester is on board. Go check out www.reaperapparelco.com today and use code DOOM10 for 10% off your entire order. Why be a sheep when you can reap? Use code DOOM10 for 10% off at www.reaperapparelco.com today. Top of the list is important documents and medications because you're going to need the meds so everything is normal and you're going to need the documents because you might not be able to get those back. So birth certificates, social security cards, uh, maybe diplomas from high school, diplomas from college, maybe your high school transcripts, marriage license, prenup if you got one. (laughs) Yeah, for Uh, sure. You know, all that good stuff, custody agreements for your kids, things like that are very hard to obtain quickly. And you might need to get these document documents back quickly, especially if you're dispersed, right? So yeah, and also, having these in docu- like a little kind of folder or a go bag, and even if it's not, even if it's not the originals, even if you're like, hey, I'm going to leave the originals here where they're safe. If nothing happens, nothing happens. But I'll take copies of everything. At least have the copies of everything because you could at least show those and utilize those until you get official documentation back from whatever source you need to get it from. Yeah, and also remember the places that you get these documents, they're going to be overwhelmed by people that need those documents that didn't get them. They might be down for a while. They may even suffer from the fire too. So you may not just have a readily accessible place to go get the documents instantaneously. So grab those documents for sure. Exactly. So uh, with that being said, Let's talk about building yourself an emergency kit. Everybody out there is going to recommend like a different hour. Some people say a 24-hour emergency kit, 72-hour, et cetera. I mean, if it was me, I I would say 72-hour would be the bare, bare minimum, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The reality is you don't know where you're going to go. I mean, I'm not going to say you don't know where you're going to go, but you don't know what the outcome is going to be. If these are wildfires, you might not come back to a home, Right. And so, many people don't. Right. So the idea of if if all you brought was seventy two hours worth of with worth of food, worth of clothing, worth of medications, things like that, after that few days, what are you gonna do? Yeah. You're you're gonna be desperate and you're gonna be depending on somebody else. Right. And that's like, you know, in my head, I'm I just keep thinking to myself, it's better to have more and not need it than not have to have enough. Right. 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 So in in theory, you know, it wouldn't hurt you to put together a bag that could get you through a week, right? I, or maybe you I have agree. a bag for everybody that can get them through a week, right? Also have a have a plan of where to go to somewhere out of a safe area. Maybe not just one place, maybe two or three places that are alternates because. You could say, well, I'm going to go stay with Uncle Joe. He lives 15 miles down the road. Well, Uncle Joe might be also affected. So find two or three places that you might be able to go instead of like a shelter, maybe someone, a friend, someone out of the safe area, a place that you can go and, you know, make your camp for right now so you can get back on your feet. Right. So let's talk a little bit about preparing your property or preparing your home for the wildfires. All right. So the one thing that I want to stress to everybody out there, with wildfire can come grid failure. With grid failure comes 
water pump's not operating. Like your well pump might not be functioning, therefore you can't wet things, you can't water things. You couldn't put out potential fire that was creeping toward the home, right? We all know basic fire safety have, you know, smoke detectors, have fire extinguishers, have these things within your home, okay? Yes, sir. Some of the things that you can do to prepare your home and your property for the wildfires kind of starts with property maintenance. And I know this is going to get a little bit dry and a little bit boring, but the bigger distance you remain, the bigger fire free distance you could keep around your home, the better, right? Right, right. So this is removing undergrowth, this is removing brush, this is keeping leaves raked up. If there's no fuel for that fire, it's not going to continue closer to your home, right? Do you have enough food in your pantry for when disaster strikes? Go to www.readywise.com and utilize code DOOM10 for 10% off your entire food order. ReadyWise offers long-term food storage items such as chicken and beef that last up to 15 years. But that's not all. Go to www.readywise.com and use our code DOOM10 for 10% off of organic food as well. Offering chili, pasta, and soups, they have you covered. Did we mention they have fruits? Bananas, blueberries, strawberries, and apples, just to name a few. With many more food options for your home, car, or bug out bag, ReadyWise has your six. Go to www.readywise.com now and utilize code DOOM10 for 10% off. Absolutely. We've went through this before at, at our place. We, we had a fire, a field fire, uh, about three years ago when we figured out pine needles are not your friends. So we remove as many pine needles and dead undergrowth as we can around our place. Exactly. And so that's – so. When we're talking about that, I mean, that's that's the maintenance side. You guys just got to think. I mean, just to give you guys an example of this, I think everybody out there has seen a wooden fence with brush growing up around it, everything else. That's dry wood that's up in the air. That is like the perfect fuel for a fire, right? It sure so is. So keep those fence lines clean. When things climb up wood, it creates the perfect – it's the perfect storm for fire. That It loves it, Okay. <laughs> It does. Uh, pine needles are, are a big thing, too. That was an accelerant that we had around our house that, you know, when we moved here, we have a line of pine trees, and I learned very quickly that these are not your friends. So keep the undergrowth away. At least keep yourself at least 50 feet away from your home. If, if you can make more than that, that's great. But at least 50 feet, 75 feet of, of clean, you know, no dead leaves and limbs and, you know, fences and just just things like that. Well, yeah, let's get back into into the fences real quick. So, I mean, how I'm talking about the growth on the fences, this would be called like a ladder fuel, right? It's something yep. the fire can climb, right? Yep. Um, so with that, you know, also, you know, if you have smaller trees in your area, trimming them up higher, right? Taking yep. the lower branches up, trim, keeping the trees properly trimmed so that nothing can climb that easily and, and burn up the leaves and get the fire climbing is going to help prevent that fire from spreading more. Okay, right. so things that would be considered ladder fuels, vines that climb, things like that, get rid of those if you're in an area that's prone to this and you want to get better prepared for it. Now, how I mentioned the idea of the grid going down and not having access to water, this is something I want everybody to kind of run with me on for a second, okay? People do rainwater collection systems very, very cheap, okay? The... You can get an, a used IBC tote for next to nothing. You don't have to worry about cleaning this thing out if you're not drinking out of the thing, right? And, again, you don't have to maintain this. The, the fire doesn't care if that water's dirty. No. Okay? So if it's, if, it's as very, if it's as simple as, hey, I've got an IBC tote, it's up off the ground, three, four feet, getting the rain collection, and all I got, I don't even need a pump. I just got a hose hooked up to this thing, and I just can kind of walk around and wet down the exterior of my property just to keep the fire from coming into my yard. I, I mean, it, it sounds very simplistic, but a lot of people don't think about these things. Right. I actually made flappers, um, flappers to put fires out. Um, I, it's kind of hard to explain here on the audio, but 
a flapper basically is a flat piece of uh, rubber, plastic, whatever you have that you can take and, and knock down the hot spots, maybe embers and things like that. That's another thing that I use. Uh, I learned that from the fire department the last time we had a wildfire out here. So might think about that if you've got something laid around that you could make something to kind of knock down those hot spots with. I get what you're saying. So basically you're taking this flat object and you're basically smushing and suffocating this fire out. Fire is one of the most basic essentials for survival. Whether you're camping, hiking, or preparing for disaster, Blackbeard has your six. Go to www.blackbeardfire.com and utilize code DOOMSDAY for 10% off your entire purchase. Blackbeard offers stormproof matches, plasma arc lighters, fire starters, and ferro rods, all of which are great for your bug out bag. Once again, go to www.blackbeardfire.com and utilize code DOOMSDAY for 10% off your entire purchase. Yeah, something that's kind of, um, it moves, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I try to say it's like a, like a big piece of rubber or plastic, maybe two foot wide by a foot and a half. Uh, long, you know, something that you can kind of knock those hot spots, embers, things like that down. Right. Okay. I get what you're saying. I mean, yeah, that sounds like a great idea to prevent the spreading for sure. Um, so to get into some other, uh, prep things, guys, you know, things, any kind of debris or wood piles or plastic toys you got maybe along a wood line, you know, like all of our kids, they have those like little plastic playhouses or plastic swing sets or right. the little plastic uh, cars that they ride around in. All all of these things are petroleum based, and fire loves these things. Okay, burn forever. Right, burn forever. So it's a really good idea to move these things away from things that you don't want to catch fire. Right. Right. Put them away, get them out of there, get them away from the wood lines. And then if you've got, I mean, here's the thing. If you got a, a lot of people like to stack firewood up on their porch and that's great. That's awesome. It makes it really easy for you to grab it and stoke the fire. But during these dry times in the summer months, whenever it's, you know, when you're in wildfire season, you just put a, a fuel source right next to your house. Yep. And again, I know these things should be common sense, but a lot of people don't think about this stuff. Also, oils and gases and, and propane tanks and things like that. Those are things that explode, and they're certainly, you know, accelerants. They are definitely can can blow up and explode if they get too hot. That You know, get that out of there. Get, get it put away. Right. So, anyway, uh, to, go back, to go back to the water thing, I know we're kind of all over the place here, but when you guys are trying to set this water thing up, just a quick tip. Make sure that hose is able to make it to these areas of your property you need it to make it to. Test this first, okay? Make sure that you're going to be okay in that department. Um, and now I did want to talk about, you know, some some different things you could do if you find yourself in the situation of a wildfire and it's too late for you to evacuate and you're stuck in a survival situation where you cannot leave your home. Right. All right. So first and foremost is hardening your home, all right? What I mean by that is sealing up doors, sealing up windows, doing things to prevent smoke from entering the home, right? Right. Harden up your home. Um, the other thing I would highly recommend doing is if, if you guys out there have a, have a room within your house that you could completely seal up, right? Because just because the fire is not getting to your house doesn't mean that smoke's not going to get in there. It could right. find its way in there at some point. If you have a room in your house that you could totally seal up from outside air, chances of survival if you're stuck and you can't evacuate could potentially go up if smoke is your problem. Not if fire is your problem, but if smoke is your problem. All right? Right. Um, having respirators on hand is very beneficial to have for the smoke inhalation. All right? And... There's, there's a lot of little tricks out there. You know, we've talked about this kind of before, Al, with, um, you know, during, like, nuclear stuff, you know, putting a wet towel underneath the door and sealing up the windows for um, to keep contaminants coming in with, you know, garbage bags and duct tape and things like that. So yeah. now, 
mask in 95 masks and things everybody's been aware of those the last two or three years because of the the pandemic pandemic if you have some of those masks it can help cut some of that 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 particulate matter that's going to be in the air so if you've got them use them i mean don't let them lay around waiting for the next virus to come around if you got a wildfire in your area try to keep some of that matter out of your lungs Right. Any, any sort of barrier is going to, going to be beneficial, even though that's not its intended use, it's going to do something rather as opposed to having nothing on. Right. Right. Also. So again, say you're, say you're there, you can't evacuate. Now this is what a lot of people probably, this is how I'm, I'm imagining this is how a lot of people end up dying in these scenarios. They get trapped within the home and they can't get out. Right. Yep. So maybe they do all the things we just said. They harden the home. They have all the windows shut. They've got the wet towels under the doors. They've sealed up the windows. But now the house starts to burn. And now they're stuck. And they're in there. And they can't get out. And that's a problematic thing, too. So you need to have a plan within your home to be able to get out. Here's the reality. A smoke-filled house, especially if it's dark, which it probably will be because... You're either going to wake up at nighttime and your house is going to be filled with smoke. You're going to wake up to that smoke detector going off. You know, grid's probably going to be down, so all the lights are going to be out. Navigating a smoke-filled environment is very difficult. Navigating it it in the dark is even more challenging, right? So simply, and and I mean, it it is this simple, guys. You could run a rope from your doors of your house to your bedroom, and you could just finagle your way out the door, right? Great. In times of stress and your heart rate's up, you are not going to think clearly. You are not going to th- think rationally. When that adrenaline hits you, it could be your, it could be your disadvantage. Get your tickets to prep stock before they're gone. Go to prepstock.ticketleap.com today. Being held in beautiful Townsend, Tennessee, this community-focused survival event is taking place October 6th through the 9th. Explore the world of homesteading and survival. Escape the sheeple and find your people at PrepStock. For more detailed information, go to PrepStock.TicketLeap.com and buy your tickets now. Want to increase your chances of survival? Learn new survival skills such as herbal remedies, beekeeping, pressure canning, and much more. For a sense of security and protection in uncertain times, buy your tickets today at PrepStock.TicketLeap.com. Tickets to this event are limited and will be gone soon. Don't miss out on this doomtastic time. Buy your tickets now at prepstock.ticketleap.com. Bug out to Prepstock this October. Agreed. Another thing, Jester, is to understand that I have seen fires take over an area and in the in broad daylight it'd be just as dark as could be because remember all this smoke is blacking out the sun it gets very dark if you get in the middle of a wildfire um that smoke's in the air so flashlights good good batteries the basics of being prepared are going to be there because i've seen in the middle of the daylight it like midnight uh smokes in the air right now, something else I did want to get into with this as well. There's a lot of people out there um, to, on, you know, on social media now on the Internet talking about building these HEPA filters out of box fans um, in order to filter the air, right? Yep. So basically what they're doing, Alan, I don't know if you've seen this or not. They're taking like the 24-inch or 30-inch box fans, like the big square box fans. Yep. And they're finding filters that fit around these things, and they're basically, you know, building these boxes out of filters and hooking these things up and duct taping them to box fans and utilizing this to filter out or to filter the air, to keep air circulating and to keep it continuously filtering. This does work. I mean, it, it, it is going to have its disadvantages if you don't have power. So just remember that I see a lot of people building these guys and this is not by any way, shape or form. This is not a life saving device. Okay. It is not. It is simply going to improve the air quality of heavy smoke-filled air around you. That's it. So if you're in an area where it's, you know, the smoke's getting into your home and the wildfires are still like 20 miles off and they're not coming and they're not saying to evacuate and you still got power on, build one of these things, kick it on, and you're going to get better air quality in your home. That is about the extent of this. That's it. I agree. That's it's like putting a Band-Aid on a broken arm, you know? 
Yeah, it, yeah, pretty much exactly. And so, guys, here's uh, I mean, we could we could definitely get into like deeper points on this, but Al, Al, you briefly mentioned this, and I did want to hit a little bit harder on this. All right. So, how you talked about like the gas cans? Yeah. Anything that has fuel in it, guys, a weed eater, a car, a lawnmower, anything that has fuel in it that has a fuel tank, if it catches fire, is going to be an accelerant, all right? So whether it's a generator, this, that, the other, I mean, you got to understand that these items need to be moved, they need to be put away, and they need to be out of the line of fire. Like, I know that sounds like we're talking about shooting, but line of fire as in where these burn lines are for the fire. There are areas like where I live, they do periodic burns to keep the undergrowth down to prevent wildfires. Want to be a guest on the show? Email it's doomsdaypodcast at gmail.com. That's it's doomsdaypodcast at gmail.com. Right? So yes, you'll... and, you know, fuels, plastics, tires, uh, anything like that, it's an accelerant. It burns nasty. It burns for a long period of time. So try to get as, get rid of as much of that. I mean, we're all hoarders. We keep stuff around. We want this. We want that. But sometimes in a wildfire like that, that's your worst friend. You don't need burning tires and gas cans out where you've got embers flying. It's just really a bad idea. Right, exactly. And that's, you know, and a lot of people, I mean, they. I guess they just don't think about it. No. You know, we, I, I mean, we, it, uh, it, it might be a simple situation as somebody has just said to, to themselves, oh, man, I never thought of that, but that's a good idea. I'm going to do that. Or you might have some people out there that just simply say to themselves, this is not a problem I ever had to face, right? So I never thought yep. to look into this stuff. And then the problem arises. And, and here's the thing. A lot of people move around the country a lot nowadays. They move for work. They're relocating due to political issues they don't like within a state. Maybe they're moving to be closer to family or they're moving back toward family. And they end up moving into these areas where these things are common, not knowing it because the realtor didn't say, oh, yeah, last year there was a wildfire less than a mile away and it's pretty prone to wildfires in the area. Yeah. Right? Well, that's a bad <laughs> selling point. So they're not going to tell you the bad selling points. They just tell you the good ones. Oh, by the way, it has a pool and da 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 da. They don't tell you that. Oh, by the way, you know, half the houses in this community have been rebuilt in the last five years because of a wildfire. They, they leave those things out, you know. Right. And it doesn't, and guys, this doesn't even have to be an area that's prone to wildfires. Uh, where I grew up at, I grew up in a very rural area, rural community. We didn't do controlled burns. We didn't have wildfires. It wasn't a problem that we ever faced in my area, okay? Right. However, uh, one year I'm coming home from school. There's fire trucks going up the road. I'm like, hey, what's going on? Well, the neighbor caught the woods on fire, right? Yep. And everything started to burn. And the fire companies came out, and they basically wet down what they could. And then they basically had the whole fire brigade out there with the rake, um, raking back everything that they could once it was wetted down to keep this fire contained in the area and just had to let it burn out. Right? Yep. Because well, the reality is... Wildfires happen everywhere. I'm sorry, I'll go ahead. Wildfires happen everywhere. You know, yeah. It's... it's it's all over. I mean, I live in the flatlands, close to a river, lots of tributaries and waterways and things where I live at. And we still have wildfires, even in flatlands, because we have grasses. Grass fires are very common here. It doesn't make any difference if it's burning trees, burning grasses, whatever it is. That fire can overtake your home, you, and everything that you've got, including your family. So it happens everywhere, folks. It's not just in the hills of California. It's not just in the eastern seaboard where you've got a lot of uh, a lot of big timber. It happens everywhere. It can happen in the middle of the desert. I mean, there's a lot of dry grasses. When they catch fire, they are going to burn. And the winds are not your friend. The winds can change at a moment's notice. Uh, it happens every year. Right, exactly. Um, and, you know, the, the point I was uh, wanting to make with that is they can't drive a fire truck through the wilderness while it's on fire to fight this thing from the inside, right? Right. And if you're in an area where they're not prone to deal, if they're not prone to wildfires, they're not going to deal with these things with anything aerial. They're not going to have, you know, planes coming over, dumping fire retardant out of the plane, you know. Great. Right. The, this isn't going to be a thing. So if you find yourself in these areas that are very uncommon to have these wildfires, you're going to be in a very bad position, right? 
And if this is something, if this is something you never had to deal with before, this is going to catch you very off, very, very off guard. So the things we're mentioning about evacuation and having a preparedness kit and being ready to go, you know, that's the thing to do. And do understand how we mentioned grid failure in the beginning of this. That is something that we should be prepared for in every disaster. I agree. And just for, just to, just to kind of wrap up things and, and, and one thing about your safety is if they tell you that it's time to get out, those that are fighting the fire probably know where the fire is more than you. A fire can look like it's 10 or 15 miles away. It might be two miles away. It might look like it's two miles away. It may be 15 miles away. Unless you do this professionally, you're probably gonna, not going to know. If they say it's time to get out, go ahead and evacuate and go. And maybe everything works out great for you. But many times when people stay behind, they get caught behind the fire lines. And it is not a wise place to be. I'm personally not going to do it. And I'm a person that doesn't believe in leaving where you're at. I'm kind of a bug in person. But if a wildfire's here, I'm going to get out. Oh, yeah, I agree with you 100%. And that's like, you know, and just for everybody out there, one last thing I'd like to point on this is, guys, this also disperses wildlife. All right. Oh, yeah. A deer is not running toward the fire. A squirrel's not going to hang around till it burns to death, right? These animals do right. get displaced. They do run the other way. They don't like fire either. So if you live in an area that's very rural, be cautious on the roadways as well, because it might not be you swerving the midst of the squirrel. It might be some other crazy person swerving the midst of the squirrel. And then God only knows what kind of shit you're going to be in for. Right. One of the biggest rules is don't get in a hurry be calculated what you do. Don't get killed trying to get out of a situation where you might die. Don't put yourself in any more danger than you're already in. Think, have a smart plan, but have a plan ahead of time. Don't wait till the last second when it's there. Think about these things now. Action message. At approximately 1 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Nora is tracking 15 ICBM nuclear missiles inbound to the following cities Orlando, Miami, Pittsburgh, Dover, Newark, Richland, Philadelphia, New York City, Baltimore, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Boston, Seattle, Detroit. This is an extremely deadly situation. Stay tuned, the next emergency message will be a presidential address.